people are scared to work on their own motorcycle. They're scared that they'll break something, they're scared that something will go wrong with the motorcycle. <laughs> but I would say, how else would you learn, right? Hey everyone, it's right there. It's a motorcycle stand. This is the Suzuki Access oil filter. Uh, it's exactly the same as my motorcycle. For the oil, I'm using Shell Advance AX7 15W50. It's a semi synthetic oil and it will cost you around 1000 rupees. Ask someone to hold the bike upright and align the two sides carefully and slowly lift the bike up. Be careful not to slip the not to slip on the bolt. Clearly the drain bolts are a little tight. Uh, apply some pressure gently and you should be able to get it out. Once we get the drain bolt out, make sure to clean the drain bolt thoroughly. These are all the metal shavings from inside the engine uh, due to the wear and tear of the engine and pretty common. That is what the magnet is for to collect all the metal shavings so that it does not end up you know, going through your engine over and over again. So make sure you use, make sure you clean it off completely before putting it back on the motorcycle. Then this this spanner, this is the oil filter that you see, uh, oil filter cover, and it has three bolts. Be a little clicky, but be careful not to split. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there'll be a little oil in the when you open the oil filter cap as well. So make sure you keep the pan below, otherwise, you'll spill the oil around just like me. Hold the oil filter cap and remove this gently. Carefully wiggle it out and be careful with the o ring as well. Make sure that you don't lose it or you don't break it. Such. oil filter. No, in case o rings are sticky, you can use o rings. You can use the red done the birthday gasket maker and a bond aki at the nakus rate are tight a cool color the oil leakage in your regular after you're done cleaning this you need to clean the oil filter cover as well there will be a lot of residue of the previous gasket that are put to clean the entire thing properly to make sure this entire part is clean where the o ring sits. This is the Anabon uh, Auto Gasket Maker, Anabon Red that I was talking about. High temperature, RTV silicone. So, this is the tube. It's open. 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 You don't need to apply too much, just a dab of the gasket maker if you're applying too much it'll it'll be wasted anyway so you don't need to apply too much use your fingers to gently spread it and make sure to keep most of the uh, 
gasket maker on the o-ring that you have on the o-ring that's already there so instead of applying it everywhere else let it be on the o-ring make sure that it's equally spread you don't need to apply too much Ex wipe off uh, the excess gasket maker it's a hole on the one side and it's closed on the other end so the end with the hole goes inside apply like a dab of oil there you can use the old oil for that that's not a problem and just press it in and you'll hear it click uh, align the oil filter cap and you don't have to tighten the bolt entirely you just tighten it up uh, with your fingers and make sure that you're tightening it equally and not use your t-span to tighten it gently uh, making sure not to over tight any of the three bolts it's all about the feel I've already cleaned the drain bolt as well make sure that it's completely shiny like that clean all of that engine shavings and everything that comes from within the engine is sticks on the drain bolt these threads you see here are very soft and it can easily be ruined or it can easily ruin the thread on your motorcycle <laughs> gently start the thread with your fingers a feel for the threads and start with your fingers 17 mm socket it's very easy to over tighten the engine drain bolt so be careful you don't do that again it's recommended that you use a torque wrench to do this but uh, since I have a feel for my motorcycle and I've done this a couple of times before, I don't need to uh, manage with just the socket. I have an empty can of mortal and it exactly is a litre. Measure 1 litre and then I'll measure 500 ml so that'll be exactly 1.5 litres. 1 litre is correct, I'll measure my it has exactly 1 litre. There's no old residue of the old oil so now I don't need to worry. So be careful while pouring oil as well. The oil change and all is done. Moving on to cleaning the chain of the motorcycle. As you can see, the chain is extremely loose. Uh, it needs to be tightened. Clean the entire chain using kerosene. And the kerosene is the cheapest thing that you can buy in the market. Inside the chain and spray it outside the chain as well. Uh, let it rinse for a couple of minutes. Around five minutes. Uh, we got the brush. Uh, we're gonna scrub the entire chain, put some more kerosene, scrub it again, and then wash the entire thing off. Make sure to clean the rear sprockets as well, because this is where lots and lots of crime and dirt sits. Okay. <laughs> ಗ್ಯಾರಂಟಿ <laughs> So now that the chain is completely clean and tightened as well to spec, we can go ahead and loop the chain or say grease it. Uh, I'm using the Nolon L80. This is a performance grease which is water resistant and usually the dirt and grime does not stick to this grease. So it keeps the chain uh, greased well for longer. It says it reads multi-purpose grease with PTFE. So PTFE is something that you need to look for and this is very important to keep the O-rings in the chain healthy. Comparatively much 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 better than uh, all your chain loops and other grease. So I'll show you how we apply. Scoop a little bit. Red, cherry red or pink in color. So get the get the grease and Rub it on the insides. This is rub it on the insides, and once you're empty, I mean once it's off, get some more. 
and again wrap it on the inside. You can wipe the excess off that's on the sides using a clean cloth. But other than that, that is done. So I would suggest you all to pick this up. Where do you get this, bro? Nulon website. Uh, you get this on the new Nulon website. Nulon L80. Keep that in mind. Engine oil has been changed. Oil filter has been changed. The chain has been cleaned and looped as well with the, with the grease, greased, not looped. So now penning is the brakes, uh, rear and the front brakes. Side six Allen key for the back. So the bolts that you have to remove to clean the back brake pads are one and here's on these two. The entire caliper comes out and then once the caliper comes out, then you will have to remove this pin on the top and then you can pull out the brake pads. Be a little tight, so don't be afraid to use some pressure or use some leverage. You can use a teeth panel like I'm doing in the You can use a teeth panel like I'm doing. Uh, any old teeth panel that you have which which you know which is blunt and which is not useful. You can use a teeth panel and knock your fit. Checking bolt as well, the Some levels. So I recently changed mine so there's lots so the life left in it so I'm not gonna mess with it. Before you put the bolts back on, take a dab of grease. Not too much. Small dab is enough. One thing that you'll have to do is use a brake cleaner to clean all clean all the brake pads and the disc, uh, which I've done after washing the motorcycle. Tighten the the back brake pads are done. Now we'll go to the front ones. Front ones on the Yosung are a little different. Uh, it has the same two bolts that you'll have to remove. And then to remove the brake pads, you'll have to remove these two bolts and then you'll get the brake pads out. So the front brake pads look good. Uh, they have enough life left in them, so I'm gonna put them back on. I'm not gonna mess with them. So in case they're not fitting, you'll have to get a flat screwdriver, stick it in and then push the pads back as much as you can to make sure it has enough clearance to fit back in. So well, before you put them in, dab a little bit of grease, not too much, just a tiny little bit and then stick it back inside. Next time you want to service your brake pads and you want to open the front because this crease will help you a lot. You will remember this crease when you're opening it for the next time. It will come out so easily. We tighten them back. So once you install both the calipers back on the bike, you'll have to pump the brakes. Pump it a few times until you feel the pressure. Squeeze the lever, you feel the pressure and it is crisp and it does not feel spongy. And it, it should like stop crisp, crisply. So if if it is a little spongy, you know, if you're able to pull the brake pads like way back, then uh, after it stops, then probably you'll have to bleed the uh, calipers. And that I will show you in another video. Make sure you check the clutch and it's adjusted and it's tightened as well, so it doesn't move around and get loosened. Clutch is adjusted. The brake pads. Uh, done the uh, brake levers adjusted and check for the oil level on both the back and the front brake reservoir and I think uh, both of them are full I recently topped them up now that everything's yeah, everything's back on go through to make the final adjustment to the bike the level shows the right amount of oil and make sure everything's fixed everything's tightened and everything's clean before you pull your bike down from the paddock. Okay, get a friend like this to help you out with a <laughs> bike. This is Suhas. If you have not already been introduced to Suhas. He was there for the car oil change as well. So yeah, 
it go bro asking all the bike you can do it by yourself but you can't record and do everything by yourself so leaving it drop it down and that's done it's a pretty decent uh, stand as well for 2000 i think it's worth every penny that you're paying for I had to shift to my cell phone because my GoPro died. <laughs> I've been using it from the morning, so it it basically died. So I had to use my cell phone. Um, so actually, to give it a try, I'm trying the uh, semi-synthetic Shell AX7. So a lot of good reviews about the semi-synthetic oil by Shell. So I've tried that this time. We'll see uh, how the bike performs and everything. I'll keep you updated. on the performance and probably you guys can do the same so this entire video is mainly for those of you who own a Yosung and you're not able to service the bike or you don't know a mechanic who can service the bike or you know a mechanic who services the motorcycle but he's charging you a bomb you know give you an idea about how much it's going to cost and how to get it done and even if you don't know a proper mechanic you can go get it done with a decent mechanic who works on motorcycles you can get done you, you know they might feel a little hesitant to touch the bike because uh, it is an expensive bike and the parts are a little expensive so uh, so if you have this knowledge of how to do it you know you can use his skills you know you tell them what to do and they'll do it properly so that shouldn't be a problem at all for you guys keeping that in mind i thought i'll make a diy uh, motorcycle service video and today was it Uh, the entire maintenance video, which includes all the greasing, uh, each and every point where you need to grease the motorcycle, once in every say five to ten thousand kilometers. It will also include things like the clutch cable lubing and throttle cable lubings and throttle body clean. If you didn't know, yes, you have to clean the throttle body every once in fifteen thousand uh, kilometers. But people don't do it because throttle body is in a difficult place to reach. So. Uh, and it's time consuming so 90% of the mechanics even in the showrooms when you drop your motorcycles they don't touch the throttle body until and unless you complain to them specifically that you have a mileage issue or you have a pickup issue or something like that so in the future videos i will show you how to clean the throttle body and how to get to the throttle body in the first place and how to clean the throttle body and what are the uh, equipment you need and everything So yeah, all in all, the basic service of this motorcycle will cost you. If you're doing it by yourself, it'll cost you less than a thousand, less than two thousand rupees. Uh, if you're getting it done with a mechanic outside, uh, the labor shouldn't cost you more than five, six hundred rupees because it's fairly easy. It's just an oil change and the oil filter change and the chain and chain lubing and chain tightening and stuff. So it shouldn't cost you too much. If it does, I would highly recommend you to uh, go for. Um, you know serviceable air filter such as K and N or BMC uh, which you can service it on your own and it performs well as well if you still want to stick to the stock air filter it is still completely fine so the only thing here is not to be scared to work on your motorcycle and as i've experienced over the past I mean, 10 years and as i've seen with my own friends people are scared to work on their own motorcycle they're scared that they'll break something they're scared that something will go wrong with the motorcycle <laughs> but i would say how else would you learn right how else would you learn if you're not working on your own motorcycle unless and until you work on your own motorcycle and you have the good knowledge and you're not scared about working on your motorcycle that is when that is when you become a good rider first thing is you need to know how to fix your bike you need to know how to ride well and you need to know how to fix your own bike so that's that's like two really 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 important uh, qualities of a motorcyclist or a rider uh, sorry for my lengthy conversation I'm a little sweaty i'm going to go take a shower now thank you for watching i'll see you in the next one